This video is going to be about how you can clean up old rusty tools on a super low budget. I completed this project without using power tools. Everything I use can be sourced at the local hardware store. I found this wrench at a yard sale for three bucks. The first thing I do when I get a gem like this home is research it. I try to find the maker's mark and search for it on eBay. When you use eBay for research, make sure you are looking at items that have recently sold, not items that are for sale. Also make sure you are comparing apples to apples. Small differences can greatly affect the value of a tool. This Coe's wrench is pretty common and usually sells for around 10 bucks. So no big roadshow moment for me. I don't think the patina police are going to raid my house for working on this thing. I also found a really cool old catalog page online that describes how this thing was built. This info made my decision not to try to disassemble this wrench an easy one. The next step was to clean the tool. I like to use mineral spirits for this. The stuff is inexpensive and low odor, so I can use it in my basement shop. It doesn't seem to affect the wood handles, so I can scrub the whole thing down. I used coarse steel wool and a wire brush. These combined with the mineral spirits took off the loose rust and dried up grease. This wrench was pretty beat up. Not a candidate for high polish. But I did want to address the mushroomed heads where this wrench was used as a hammer. I used a ball peen hammer to knock the deformed metal back into shape. Any hard surface as a backer will work. I have this mini anvil, but the top of your vise or a scrap piece of steel will work fine. Once I finished peening, I used a file to reshape the jaws. A good source for cheap but good quality files is yard sales. I think I got the one I'm using here for 50 cents. Files cut going forward. If you file back and forth, or smack the file on your workbench to clear it, you will be heckled and shamed by the International Brotherhood of the File. Just be warned. My file skated across the upper jaw, indicating that the metal was as hard or harder than my file. If I tried to file this, I would dull the file. With the jaws in better shape than they were, I moved on to sanding. I like to start with emery cloth. The cloth backing makes it easy to bend and shape the sandpaper to fit in tight spaces. I've used the 3M stuff Home Depot sells and it works fine. It's just a little pricey and they only sell it in a variety pack, coarse, medium, and fine. I got this cheap stuff from Harbor Freight. This project will be my first experience with it. And I got this stuff for Christmas. We'll see how it works. I started with the medium grit 3M paper. I figure it's equivalent to about 120 grit. Check out how the patina sands off as orange powder. Looks a lot like rust, doesn't it? Sometimes I'll use my file as a backer when I'm sanding. Again, the IBF would not approve of this. You can also use a scrap of wood or a popsicle stick. Hand sanding takes time. Find some good music to sand along to. I like Take's Bluegrass album channel, or maybe some Chris Stapleton. Take breaks if you get tired. Remember, the tool is probably close to 100 years old. There is no rush. Get creative on how to sand the tough spots. Use dowels, popsicle sticks, fold up the paper any way you can to sand every nook and cranny. So the Harbor Freight sandpaper gets a thumbs down. The paper didn't have the same bite as the others, and the sand came off of the cloth backing pretty quickly. The 3M worked well, and the new stuff is great. I love the way you can rip off any length you want. Once I switched to the finer emery paper, I noticed the metal was clogging the paper quickly. I knew it was time to switch to wet and dry paper. I started with 320 grit wet and dry paper and WD-40 for lubrication. The WD-40 keeps the paper from clogging. I also squirted some WD-40 behind where I couldn't sand and into the screw mechanism. I went over the whole thing again with 600 grit wet and dry. 
I used the mineral spirits to give the wood handles a second thorough cleaning. That's decades of greasy hands coming off on those paper towels. One side had a split that I glued with some wood glue. After the glue dried, the handles were loose, so I used my ball peen hammer to tighten the rivet. I was careful not to get too carried away and split the wood worse than it was. I sanded the wood starting with about 100 grit and finished with fine steel wool. To protect the wrench from corrosion, I used furniture wax. I've had this can of Johnson's Paste Wax for years. I'm sure there are better products on the market, but this is what I've got. So here's the Coase wrench, all finished. The screw mechanism is nice and smooth. The jaws have marks I couldn't file out due to the case hardening, but the mushroomed ends are square now. This particular wrench led a hard life. The dents and dings are really deep, and I would have had to remove too much metal to get them out. Besides, this tool earned its scars, and now it's ready for another lifetime of usefulness. I hope this shows that you can bring an old rusty tool back to life on a super low budget. Now if you have some extra money in the budget, the first purchase I would recommend is a rotary tool like a Dremel. Harbor Freight and others sell really reasonably priced knockoffs. I would recommend one with variable speed. The rotary tool gives you the ability to grind, polish, and wire wheel. For this project, the wire wheel attachments, along with my homemade Scotch-Brite wheels, would have been ideal. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. For extra content, I thought I would share a cool method for staining wood. You take a clean piece of steel wool, tease it out a little, and put it in a glass jar of white vinegar. The longer you leave it soak, the darker the stain. Here's what the stuff looked like after a week. Goes on clear, but starts to darken after a few minutes. Here's the results I got on pine. 